Phil Pelto is the co-founder and chief connections officer of Firestorm, business-to-business networking, and the owner and chief connections officer of Certus, business-to-consumer networking, both with an increasing number of chapters and members across the Colorado Front Range. Phil co-founded Firestorm while he was working as a suit salesman in Minnesota nearly 15 years ago, scaled rapidly and expanded to Florida, and then hired a professional manager to operate the business while he moved to Germany to pursue a girl he had met at Oktoberfest. The manager crashed the business while Phil was winning the girl, which Phil considers a net win, and years later restarted the concept after moving to Colorado. Phil and I were only barely acquainted before this podcast session, and we kind of dork out on the whole B2B membership organization experience. We've got a lot of overlap in the way we do things and why, yet we serve different audiences for different reasons. Local think tank members are primarily business owners and there to work on their business, and Firestorm members include some owners, but more often professional salespeople, and they are there for strategic partnerships, education, and the referrals. Phil has had a very interesting journey, and he's got a lot of big plans for the future, so I hope you'll tune in and enjoy, as I did, my conversation with Phil Pelto. Let's have some fun. Welcome to the Loco Experience Podcast. On this show, you'll get to know business and community leaders from all around Northern Colorado and beyond. Our guests share their stories, business stories, life stories, stories of triumph and of tragedy, and through it all, you'll be inspired and entertained. These conversations are real and raw, and no topics are off limits. So pop in a breath mint and get ready to meet our latest guest. Welcome back to the Local Experience Podcast. This is your host, Kurt Baird. I'm just getting acquainted with Phil Pelto, uh, but we've got some mutual acquaintances up and down the front range, and Phil is the co-founder and chief connections officer of Firestorm, or my Firestorm. Yeah. Uh, so tell us, tell the average listener that's maybe not heard about Firestorm what it is. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for having me on. This is, uh, sure. I'm super excited and I love this studio here. So. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, my money tree right above you, by the oh, way. Oh, all right. Awesome. It's fairly healthy. Yeah. All right. I'll rub it for luck here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, Firestorm is a business development organization and we uh, really help small business owners grow top line revenue with strategic partnerships and referrals and, hmm. you know, help people identify who their ideal client is, um, who else is selling to that ideal client and um, try and get those strategic partners in the room together to yeah. develop a relationship and share share business. So it's it's more about network than like a sales skills kind of thing. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing that. It's more about strategic partnerships. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, there's definitely, you know, um, it's tangential to, to the sales thing and it kind of leads into that, right? So, but we have um, sales trainers in our organization and we have um, great partnerships with it. I actually used to be a sales trainer myself. And so, mm. you know, I think there's there's uh, sales trainer DNA exactly in there. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm I'm a sales guy, right? That's right. that's who I am. Is that who most of your members are? Is salespeople or is it owners? Is it? Yeah. So, um, I would say that they are um, the rainmaker in the business. Mm. And so, seventy percent of our business uh, or our members are business owners. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're responsible for that um, business development piece of things. Yeah. And then thirty percent of our members are salespeople for larger organizations. You know, whether it be a bank. Or right, but that are generally business to business kind of thing. Business to business exclusively. A yeah. sign company, uh, right? Whatever Com- title insurance. Comcast, you right? Know, yeah. Right. Okay, that got kind it. Of thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So it's like, do you get insulted if somebody calls you a networking organization? Because I no. kind of do. No, you don't. Okay, I don't. I mean, we're different. So. I think it. Um, yeah, totally. And but I. I get insulted. And we are. I'm not insulted by it. I was just teasing. No, I um I, w- I get insulted if if you you know refer me to like three letter acronym companies. <laughs> so <laughs> I like to say we're the anti BNI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, and I have respect, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean that that's you know it's fun to like. There's an OG kind of in, in right. some ways. It's like hating on the Patriots, right? You know, like everybody <laughs> loves to do it, but you know they're freaking monsters you know right they got five super bowls yeah you like got? yeah or yeah, whatever yeah. <laughs> um so you know you can't you can't really poo poo bni that much because 
you know, Ivan Meisner had a great idea, built this massive business, you know, got a private equity investor, you know, 10 yeah. years ago, and it was like a hundred million dollar valuation. Oh, was that right? Yeah. Like, you know, he did okay. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You can't, you can't poo poo that too much. Well, and you can't blame the church when it gets corrupted over time. It gets too big and powerful and lazy and no, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, Evan. If you're listening, we're not talking trash. Yeah. We're just both jealous. <laughs> but yeah. you are ultimately more on the networking end of that spectrum of business. Totally. We just, we just have a little different um, tilt to it. And I think we're, um, there, there's sort of different, um, tiers of networking where, you yeah. know, if you're, if you're brand new, super green, you don't understand anything, you go to this group. And if you're a little bit more seasoned, you go to another one and, mm. you know, as you kind of step your way up and then you get to a place like where you're at, where it's business owners, it's not necessarily a networking organization. It's a peer advisory thing. You're having different conversations and, and then you go all the way up the ladder to, you know, the, yeah, the Tiger 21s of the world yeah. or whatever, where they're yeah. already big juju guys. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Gals. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a there's a, a ladder that you... So would you say most of your of your owners, are they mostly in that kind of maybe 5 to 20 employees, kind of that what we call a midsize, or are they some quite a bit bigger than that too? No, I think I think they even smaller, like, you know, okay. zero... Some are themselves. Yeah, zero, zero to 20, mm. um, you know, because at some point you graduate out of Firestorm, and this is something that I'm kind of thinking about as a, as a business owner and, mm. you know, planning for the future, but like, you'll graduate from Firestorm when you stop being the business development person. Right. Um, it's not necessarily a great fit anymore, you right, know? So right. like I would kick them to you. Maybe you, you're, you're now sales manager or mm-hmm. sales person, whatever, yeah. then they joined a Firestone instead. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So when, you know, and I don't Oh, know, and the owner comes over to the logo think tank. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so I don't know exactly when that, you know, transition happens. Yeah. I know for, yeah. you know, for, for some people, they've got 40 employees before that happens. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I would hope that it would be before that, but you know, like sometimes the business owner just really loves to be in biz dev, you know, yeah. or, yeah. or maybe that's their, their weakness and they want to get out of it as fast as possible. So first <laughs> yeah. person they hire is a biz, right. you know, biz right. dev person. So, um, you have how many chapters you are scattered around kind of the front range here? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, or are they chapters? What do you call them? Yeah. Groups? Chapters, groups, whatever. Okay. I don't, it, we call them chapters, but it's a semantics thing, whatever. I don't yeah. know. Um, so down to Colorado Springs and then up to uh, Johnstown is our furthest north one. Okay. Um, we're looking to do a Fort Collins one here soon. Yep, yep. Um, but we have 18 that meet oh, on, wow. a, on a weekly basis. Okay, so they're pretty concentrated within that span anyway. Yeah. How, so a lot of them, a dozen of them in the Denver metro or ish? Yeah, 10. yeah, probably a little more actually. Wow. So yeah, we just, we have one in the springs and then one up here in johnstown but then there's like firestone and you know north which is kind of expanded denver metro exactly yeah yeah yeah. i mean pretty soon it's just going to be all one big thing so right right i did is it pretty regional um like the way that you put these groups together or is it just you find somebody that's got a network and they can put a group together and it's a win-win in that regard or yeah like it, it like do people in arvada kind of stay in arvada a lot or I golden think so. or whatever. You know, for for the most part I would I would think that they do and for you know, this because we meet, we meet in person. So, right. you know, I don't want and we had we used to have a Fort Collins group a long time ago and there was a guy that um drove from Parker every week up to Fort Collins. Oh, to manage this group. And I thought it was insane. I had no idea why that, you know, but he he was there and he was one of the best, you know, people with attendance and everything. So, yeah, um, yeah I think uh, just for, you know, consistency and, you know, if there's a weather thing or whatever, like it's it makes sense to be in your backyard, right? You know, close to your house, your office. Right. Um, but that's not really um, necessary. But you know? some people are like, reps for the whole Denver metro area for exactly. their business, right? So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So um, what I'm more concerned with is finding a good fit where there's there's overlap between people's ideal clients, you know? So mm. it's, it makes a lot of sense for you to be in the room with the people that you're in the room with. Mm. So less to do with the geographic piece of it and more to do with the fit um, with who you're both selling. So to. if there's a whole bunch of real estate people in one thing... 
that helps that they're all kind of adjacent to real estate and have or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So or like car sales plus re- services or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you got the <laughs> idea. So yeah, it's I get a, the idea. a little different, but but yeah. Um, but yeah, as long as long as they're selling to the same types of clients. Well, there's a million ways to make a buck in the world, right? Like, isn't it so amazing crazy. as we um, and how many how big are your groups uh, of those eighteen or whatever groups? Yeah, um, I think our average right now is we're kind of mid teens. Okay, you know? so they're fairly intimate groups as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up I to don't... 20, 25 maybe is like the biggest one kind yeah, of thing. And yeah, then yeah, That's You kind of put the brakes on and say, hey, mm-hmm. why don't somebody else start another group around here? Yeah, 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 exactly. Because, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that I dive into, um, you know, if, if you want to get in the weeds, we can. But, you know, number of group. You I don't know. know. You want to you pull back the curtain? It's, yeah, more than happy to. But the, one of the um, sort of people or philosophies that I subscribe to is just, you know, um, inch my inch wide and a mile deep, like hmm. a smaller group of people. And I really think that there's, there's a lot of research to support this. There's, there's a cognitive limit on how many relationships a person yeah. can maintain. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm much more interested in finding, you know, a small group of people, a tight knit community that's like rock stars for you versus casting a wide net and mm. finding, you know, a gajillion people. That's so. interesting. I actually uh, describe myself as an inch deep and a mile wide. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So, which that's me and that's unfortunately the the because i've got like l- l- fewer members than you but i've got a little over 100 members and all of them i really like mm-hmm. and none of them i really spend enough time with you know because i'm just an inch deep and a mile wide i'm running around here and yeah, there yeah, and yeah, yeah. keeping all the chapters as healthy and full of members as i can yeah it's it well and so you know the the research that i look at and sort of you know um agree with i i should say yeah um right. is the the limit is about 150 people that you can maintain a relationship mm-hmm. with and within that there's these tiers and the the inner circle is five people and you spend half your time with those five people hmm. and then the next layer out is another 15 and you spend an additional 25 percent of your time with those 15 people so hmm. that core 20 mm-hmm. gets 75 percent of your time so um you know and then the the next 30 get 15 percent and the last hundred get ten percent so it's like it's really as you get further from your core yeah those outside people get a real small percentage of your time and and that's where maybe you feel like you're spread thin right well it is and um one of the one of kind of the interesting things about local think tank and differentiating it from vistage is Mm -hmm. that vistage really prefers their people to have at least two maybe three groups of 14 to 16 members oh they're facilitators they're facilitators yeah, yeah, they're chairs right. they call yep. them yep and and we're like we just kind of want you to have one group of up to 12 yeah and kind of your what you're saying is that that the ask that vistage makes is like more than most people can actually naturally have proper relationships yeah. with. yeah yeah i would agree with that you and for the 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 local think tank only having a dozen anyway yep yep 100 percent yeah, no so offense, like Vistage. You, I was just like picking holes in yeah, your model. Yeah, well, no, but it's, it's hard, right? It like, because it, 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 like, I've got ten facilitators now. Okay, and so managing just my relationships with those chapter leaders, you've yeah. got maybe eighteen, I guess. Mm, yep. Is your is each group have a leader that's really in charge? It does. Okay. Yep. So, a founder, like they're the one that's in charge of bringing members in and stuff too. Yeah, with your but, help. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we give them a and lot of support, but um, your guy Nate. Yep, and Nate. Um, so, you know, we give them some support, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's on their yeah. plate. Hmm. So, okay. Yeah. So I guess, do you want to describe like a, it's a weekly group? Yep. It's a weekly group. Um, yeah. So it, you know, the, there's the, the weekly meetings are pretty structured, you know, there's an agenda and you know, it, it's not very dissimilar from other things that you may have yeah. experienced. You know, Master so, Networks, BNI. Yeah. Um, so you Blue know, Lions Club, you know, random this and that. What? Who else is out there? Uh, Tabletop networking. How much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a there's a infinite list of you know these little one off groups and right. then ones that have made it a little bigger and um yeah so it's there's there's a ton okay um but uh, anyway so you know structured meeting there's go um, around yeah introductions make an ask do an elevator pitch yeah and then somebody does a presentation so the the thing that it it's all sort of geared around and all of our, you know, the, the method to the madness mm-hmm. is based in deepening these relationships with people. So, you know, if you and I are in a, in a group together, mm. I really want to understand 
you, first of all, mm-hmm. you know, your background, what makes you tick, what are your goals, hopes, dreams, aspirations, you know, and then um, tell me mo- more about your business. And the business thing comes second, I think, because, you know, if you decide to go do something else, um, I, I'm building a relationship with you. Like I'm going to mm. stick with you. You know, if you yeah. decide to change businesses, change, you know, go to a different company, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, you and I are the, the sticky thing there, yeah, not yeah. the company that you're working for. Right. Um, you know, we've got people that work for a bank and it's like, you know, they change banks every six months or, you know, right. So. And, they, and if they're good, they take at least a third of their best customers with them kind of, yeah. you know, over time. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, you know, we're developing the relationship with each other and then understanding what we do on a professional level. So, you know, at the end of the day, what you're trying to build is a group of people that really are, um, an extension of yourself, you know, a, a an outsourced, uh, yeah. little, ambassadors almost. Yeah. Ambassadors, a little sales team. You In know, the so. nonprofit space, we have ambassadors. I'm an ambassador for reality for children in the Matthews house. And it's yeah. like somebody that's equipped, they know enough to be at least a sales assistant and cue it up for me. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Identify an opportunity and then just, hey, Kurt, here, you need to talk to this person. Yeah. And then I'm out. I did my job, um, but that's that's part of the magic of a group like this and being consistent and being, you know, uh, developing that relationship over the long term is I really get to know you and your ideal client. So when I'm out talking to my buddies and they say, like, oh, I'm struggling with this thing in my business and, you know, I wish I had some people to bounce ideas off of, I'm like, Oh, oh, that's <laughs> I got an app for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and you're all business to business, right? So yep. you don't have that inner. That was one of the challenging things about a lot of networking groups is a lot of people are just there to sell to consumers or whatever, and then yep. you're like, oh, well, I need to make a referral this week. I'll have a massage. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I just think yeah, that no, those effective, but people should, you know, like I have another business that's for just the consumer side of things. Um, and so, you know, we've got totally separate you groups. Do. I do, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, so I've got a totally separate thing where they've got their own groups and it's all the real estate, mortgage, insurance, massage therapist, chiropractor, you know, all that stuff. And what's that? It's called Certus. Oh, so you're just a member of a different group like that. No, no, no. No, I, you I, own it too. I own that one too. So, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you didn't even tell me about that. Yeah, well, you know, sorry. Doesn't, it's not, not <laughs> applicable to me. Right. Right. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. All right. And probably most of your listeners. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. So a mortgage lender or other business to see a, whatever they don't become a part of Firestorm necessarily. No, nope. we don't. We don't let them into Firestorm. We'll say, hey, you should go check out Circus. Oh. So. <laughs> huh, that's a whole thing. Yeah. Well, gosh. Uh. So you recently, and I think maybe for the first time, hired like a. Another rainmaker, right? In, yeah. In Nate Jorgensen. Yep, exactly. So yeah, we uh, we brought Nate on full time in uh, May of last year, twenty two. So um, and he's he's actually been a member for a long time. I, I figured probably. Yeah. yeah, I believe he was member number eight. I want to say. Oh gosh. In in Colorado. Um, so he was member number eight, and then he actually started a downtown group for us um, in like 2015 or 2016. Okay. And then ran that group, and then he's kind of been like a utility player for us. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. he'll go out and help like out. Like most valuable volunteer kind of thing and yeah. whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if there's a group that's kind of, you know, hit a roadblock or something, he'll go in and like, oh, cool. you know, uh, get, them, get them jazzed up and, you know, kind of grease the wheels a little bit. Um, so he was doing that for a long time and then, um, you know, all the stars aligned and we were able to snag yeah. him last year. So that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Cause it, I assume that w- that he was a volunteer for most of that time, just yeah. like given into the cause and whatever. And yep. that's really cool that, yeah. and, uh, you know, to be fair, like, um, he, he was totally volunteer and he just really bought into the whole concept. R- right. But I think he, in doing so. Um, he used to be in the commercial furniture business. He was selling, you know, office furniture. I think he sold just, this is just from fire, right. st- Firestorm referrals, like just straight business from the group. Um, probably six or $7 million. Right. So, yeah. It wasn't yeah. a strictly, uh, you know. Altruistic, can, you know. Right. Endeavor. He was winning too from that he was winning activity. A lot. And that yeah. was, yeah. One, one of the reasons that he engaged is because he was winning from it too. Yeah. 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 And, um. You know, I, it was crazy because over all those years, um, going back to 2015, 
he was the only commercial furniture person that we had in the group between so, all those groups yeah all yeah so interesting yeah I don't know. I think maybe it was a little by design on his part. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oops, I couldn't find anybody. Right. So. That's funny. Hey, I'm going to take a real quick break. The Loco Experience is sponsored by In Motion, providing next day delivery for local businesses. If you need anything delivered in northern Colorado, In Motion's flat fee service is a great resource for your business. Delivering from the Wyoming border to Denver and anywhere in between, their clients range from small breweries to real estate companies. In Motion can deliver almost anything you can imagine. If this fits a need for your business, contact In Motion directly by emailing them at InMotionNoCo at gmail.com. That's I N M O T I O N N O C O at gmail.com and mention you heard it on the Loco Experience. So when we were when we left off, we were kind of just really talking about the principles that you'd installed as yeah. Firestorm came into into developing what it is now, which is yeah. really a regionally successful uh, connections and development group. I want to jump in the time machine and learn because it, it it didn't just happen, right? It took time, yeah, influences, totally. all that kind of stuff. So let's jump and go back and find little Phil. Yeah, cool. Uh, second grade, where uh, what was your life like? Where were you at? Um, so it's interesting. Uh, I. I got back. I had visited uh, my parents, um, my dad and my stepmom, um, a couple days ago. Oh. I took my son out there. Um, home is Minnesota. Okay. And we were actually talking about um, second grade and <laughs> and kind of around that time. And, you know, there Mrs. Was, Baker was my second grade teacher. For yeah. Worth. Yep. Nice. I actually, you know, so I went to a private school in second grade and I didn't pay a whole lot of attention that particular year. So I don't remember my second grade. Teachers. I could be wrong about Mrs. Baker. She might have been first grade. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I had some, you know, sort of, you know, teachers that stuck out for sure that helped me out a lot. But anyway. Um, so are you in the cities of Minnesota or are you in the country of Minnesota? Because yeah, there's a lot of difference. Yeah, yeah, it's It was um, second grade in particular was sort of the northern suburbs of uh, St. Paul, um, St. Paul, Minneapolis. So I, I was living in East Bethel, um, which okay. is maybe 45 minutes north of Minneapolis. Yep. And it was um, – I went to a private school – um, for that one year, and it was... The, the, that was second grade? That was second grade. Okay. And it was the year that my parents got divorced. Okay. And so that was part when of... You, private Catholic school or uh, private... Christian. Christian school? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll get into the religion stuff later, but... Yeah, no no worries. Uh, like, were they trying to straighten you out by putting you in a private school? No, <laughs> I think... Because they were getting a divorce? Right? No, I, I think it was just, um, you know, they... Did your behavior cause their divorce, <laughs> Lil Phil? Yeah, probably. Uh, uh, no, I'm sure it didn't. No, But no, no, kids no. think that kind of stuff sometimes, so, unfortunately. So. Yeah. Um, no, it was... Uh, I think it was just sort of, you know, they wanted to have an, a nice place for us to go to school. And yeah. um, I had gone to a private school in kindergarten and hmm. then took a break in first grade and then anyway whatever so um so your life was about to change though yeah and and so um sort of to the origin story of you know firestorm i think this actually plays into it where you know i started out in kindergarten i went to one school um i Mm. went to actually three separate schools for first grade wow um and then i went to another school in second grade and you know totally different like not the same group of kids and then another school for third, fourth, fifth, <laughs> and then another one for sixth through, you know, twelfth. So like I, we moved around a lot, especially because, in your, those early years. So mm-hmm. you could either not have any friends or get good at making friends quickly. Exactly. So I got good at making friends quickly. Yeah. And um, and then one of the other things that um, I, apparently my dad didn't know, uh, which I thought was kind of funny, um, I we didn't have any money you know we were poor like he knew that part right so, <laughs> right but... <laughs> I'm, sure he, I'm sure he did what what was he poor doing or um so what? he was he, moving around a lot trying to find a career that fit kind of so or? um no, no the the first few moves were you know the family was growing and they were trying to like you know find mm. a better place for us to live um i have uh four younger bro- or three younger brothers so there's four of us okay yep. um i'm the oldest and 
you know, so the, as the family was growing, it was like, okay, this apartment's too small. Let's move yeah, to yeah. another place. Oh, that's too small. Let's go to another house. Yep. Um, and then they got divorced and, and then my mom and I uh, moved into an apartment and then she was trying to, you know, get us a house. Your mom so, and I, but not the um, kids? Uh, no, sorry. My, yeah, the my brother's kids. Brothers too. Yeah. So, uh, but... So there was a lot of moving around, and th- there wasn't a lot of resources. My dad, you know, was a mailman, and you okay. know, he did that for thirty-seven or thirty-eight years, and then he retired. Yeah. And he was, um, you know, I mean, he did the best yeah. he could, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know, you got child support, and you're trying to, you know, pay your, you know, basically paying two rent payments, you yeah, know, right, like it's right. it's a lot. So um, I knew from a young age that if I wanted anything, I was on my own for it, you know, like. If right. I want to get pop and candy and that kind of stuff, like you got to go figure out how to do it. So, yeah. um, so I started hustling and I would like sell, uh, <laughs> sold fireworks on the playground okay. and, um, little like smoke bombs and, you know, stink bombs. Like leftover and, from 4th of July, you'd yeah, buy and, some extras and then sell them. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, get a little money on the side to, you know, go buy Mountain Dew and candy cigarettes and all that. So, <laughs> right. Um, so it, uh, isn't that funny? How you must be about the same age as me if you remember candy cigarettes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I'm 1980, baby. So, oh, yeah. No, I'm quite a bit older. Are you? Okay. Yeah. But anyway, I guess yeah, they yeah. still had them around then. Yeah, they did. Um, not for long, but, you know, they're, they were there. So, uh, but, it was um, White Lightning. Do you remember White Lightning? I do. <laughs> <laughs> a Mountain Dew competitor yeah. for a while. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They're man, all those uh, and Shasta. Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so so between those two things, you know, I think that was kind of the beginning of my, you know, sales career. Yeah. And actually, my dad reminded me of a story that I had totally forgot about. I you know wasn't top of mind for me, but he said. When I was in second grade, um, we would, we were going to this church, and uh, they had a contest for you know a gumball machine, and that that was the prize. And they said whoever could oh. bring the most kids to um, this like vacation Bible school um, got the gumball machine. Oh, so I was like, heck yeah, like <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so I started recruiting kids and, uh, wound up, you know, we needed like a big van to bring them all to vacation Bible school. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was my jam and I started, uh, started hustling pretty, pretty young. And then it just kind of carried on into, you know, later years. Yeah. What so. kind of a, like, do you have an unstable family environment you're the oldest mm-hmm. of all these brothers probably a lot of pressure as well or did you handle that pressure by by being a good kid and leading your little brothers or did you kind uh, of be a bad kid or somewhere well, in the middle yeah, somewhere how, in the middle. how much younger were your brothers was it like boom 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 yeah it was like you know my uh two years younger four years younger and then 10 years younger so gotcha. yeah i mean there was a a yeah. decent amount of spacing yeah i'm the i'm the oldest of four as well i just have one oh. sister along the way and okay. 10 years younger is how old joe is so okay cool i know yeah. know, the, know the sensation yeah 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 um yeah so definitely you know pressure and you know i don't think i was uh on either extreme like super good or super bad yeah. but um you know but you're I, always connecting yeah and and hustling always hustling and you know i I did. I got good grades. Like that was my. I'm. I'm a smart kid. I'm book smart. Like, I was on the accounting team in high school. Like, okay. I didn't drink until I, you know, was old enough to drink, and you know all yeah. that nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't party, and you know, so I kept my nose clean in yeah. that yeah. regard. So you were responsible. You set the, a good example for your yeah brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and then. So you say you uh, grew up with your mom mostly? Yeah. Not your dad so much? Right. Did she didn't remarry until you guys were gone, or she did after a while? you have a stepdad or anything? Uh, no stepdad. Um, oh, wow. And he, you know, uh, she, she had, you know, boyfriends and stuff. Sure. But, um, and there were some some guys that, you know, we connected with and, you know, that were around. But, uh, but yeah, no. You were just, you were the bros mostly. Yeah. Yep. With mom. Yeah, exactly. And she was very, very into, you know, being mom. Yeah. And it was, it was awesome. she was good at it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. What, uh, what was your next step? 
you know, after high school and, and things like that? <laughs> so um, I thought that I was going to go to college and do the whole, like, I wanted to be either an accountant or uh, an engineer, um, Yeah, which was kind of a far cry from what I actually wound up doing. Um, so I, uh, I got, I, st- you know, working young, I started when I was 14 and I got an, a job offer from my girlfriend's dad in high school. Okay. Um, I was pulling chairs at the local ski hill and, uh, he said, Hey, you know, why don't you come telemarket for me? Um, I'll, really? I'll pay you six, I think it was six bucks an hour. Right. And that was about a dollar. Yeah, four, four and a quarter or four seventy five or something was minimum wage at that time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's what I was making at the ski hill. And he said, I'll pay you six bucks an hour to come dial the phones. Yeah. And I was like, sweet, sign me up. Right. And... You never get cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I went and telemarketed and huh. then uh, I got really good at it. And then uh, the next summer, um, I got recruited to sell Cutco knives. Oh, and that was the summer between my junior and senior year in high school. Wow! And I, ki- I killed it. I made seven thousand dollars that summer, or ten, or something dumb. Yeah, or more. Yeah, and then, um, and then I was hooked, and I right. was like, "Ooh, there's, I could either go to college and you know, not make money, right, and hopefully get a good job that I'm going to make you know whatever dollar amount." Or I could follow this Cutco path, and I kind of got into the management track. Oh, right on! You're, and, you're a Cutco uh, spawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they got their hooks in me, and it was it was actually a really good experience. Yeah, so. for sure. Well, it's so cool how, like here in Fort Collins, HP. Yeah. Um, you know, some of their downsizings and stuff would spawn off a bunch of entrepreneurs because they didn't want to leave, but they didn't want to stay with a big company. And sure. HP was the only big tech company that you could work for here. Yeah. Or like Neenan Company, when David Neenan operated it, I think, I don't think it's been the same company since, but when David had it, construction contractors would just be spawned out of that company because it was like they, they taught people how to do things good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Cutco is another one of those that yeah, just kind of creates college propainers. Yeah, yeah. Created M&E painting in some respects or whatever. Yeah, and, others, and you know. uh, Southwest Books. Right. Um, you know, they're all those guys. Yeah, and the uh, there's a thing up in Vancouver, uh, Builders Training Academy or something like that. Oh, I'm not familiar with that one. BTA. Uh, yeah, another like kind of built from those big systems and then they took the best of that. And then, and even probably I suspect we're going to flash ahead. I'm I'm, I'm annoying that guy that way, but like some of the principles of firestorm were some of the things you learned at Cutco 20 years before, 10 years before. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, you know, so one of the things that Cutco is really big on is you don't cold call you, you get referrals. Hmm. So you start out with a warm list of all your friends and family Mm -hmm. and then you ask them for referrals. And they teach you how to, you know, they give and you a, a script. And it's a self-fueling, you never like looking through the phone book. Yep, exactly. Um, so I, because of my circumstances, I didn't have a lot of rich friends and yeah. you know, stuff like that. You know, like I had to, there were a couple people I knew that could get me into a couple other people that, you know, yeah. could make me, you know, uh, go off. And uh, so I got, I got so really. So you had to really focus on the right customer. Yep. I got really, right. really tuned in on ideal client, and I got really, really good at asking for referrals. Yeah, and getting getting good referrals. Yeah. So um, that was my jam, and uh, that turned into a six year career with Cutco. Oh wow! Yeah, were you traveling around teaching other people how to do it the right way, or just slinging knives? So I sold for the first year and a half, and then I started an office. Um, that's kind of the path with hmm. Cutco is you, okay. you know, open a branch office okay, and then you recruit kids and you teach them how to sell. And then you, you know, you get 5% off of each of their sales yeah, or whatever. Some, yeah. Something like that. Depending. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, I did a branch office in Southern Minnesota and then I, um, went back the next summer and did a, a branch office in Northern Minnesota in, oh, wow. in Duluth. Uh-huh. And then I was in Duluth for like three years. So, wow. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. And I, you know, total, um, I think I recruited 1100 kids. What? Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It was crazy. Yeah. That's a big, <laughs> that's a big amount of people. 
Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. So, um, and taught a lot of kids how to sell, and and it was really fun to see the success stories, you know, from all those kids. Yeah, and I mean, I still and keep... some of them stayed with Cutco for a while. Most of them went on to bless other companies by mm-hmm. bringing those skills that you helped them learn. Yeah, into their organization. Absolutely, and you know, some of the some of the coolest stories, you know, from kids that you know didn't really know what they were going to do. And, and then they were like, Hey, I can afford to pay for a really good college, um, because right. of less money that right. I'm making. And so they went on and got degrees and, and yep. they, uh, yeah. So it, it was, it was really cool and really rewarding. No regrets there. No regrets. Yeah. yeah it was, and a lot of appreciation. Yeah. Cause you could have worked at a restaurant. You could have done a lot of things that normal, you know, and that combination really between the telemarketing and the cut co boots on the ground experience was really a magic part of it, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get really good at handling rejection and you get a tough skin and uh and then, you know, learn that Well and referral. smart enough not to like call on cold people that don't want your stuff all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> right. So yeah, there was uh there was a lot of a lot of good stepping stones into to what I'm doing now. So Yeah, cool. Yeah. So um what's next? You said you had a five year career with Cutco? Yep. Did um, you find a girl you like or anything yet? Along this journey, uh, right you know, nothing worth talking about. Well, well you found a few, but <laughs> <laughs> nothing yeah. to put a ring on it. I got, yeah, I, I did get engaged for a hot second, but that's a, that's another. How's story. Duluth? <laughs> what was that like compared to growing up, kind of in the suburbs of the city? I, I visited Duluth, yeah, and it seems really cool. And and where was the town in southern Minnesota where you put an office too? Uh, so my office in southern Minnesota was in Mankato. Oh, um, sure. So yeah, makes sense. Yeah, there's a co- college towns. So, right. um. And then Duluth was awesome. I loved living in Duluth. Um, this is actually where I bought my first house, mm-hmm. and I I was 24 when I bought my first house. Um, and then uh, that's a it's just a really fun, cool town. Yeah, and yeah. We had a great time there. It so. seemed really cool, and we drove the coast all the way down, whatever, and yeah. went down to Wisconsin and stuff. Nice. But, but Duluth has got like it's an amazing like coastline. Yeah, yeah, it's Around beautiful. There. And I mean, not just Duluth, but up and down. It's yeah, like up and down. Amazing. It, it's uh, and if you guys haven't been there, like you got to go check it out at least once in your life. It's like being on the ocean. And, totally. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy because it's a freshwater lake. Yeah. But anyway, um, so yeah, I loved it there, and I go back to to visit, um, you know, relatively regularly I yeah. guess. You have yeah, family anyway. and cousins and stuff like that still yeah. up and around, yeah. friends from high school, yep. whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, um, after I got done with Cutco, we did, um, I did a year in copier sales for Canon. Oh, um, that was a good learning experience. (laughs) They might've promised a few things (laughs) that didn't really materialize Yeah, it was. and copiers uh, were way more boring to sell than knives. And so I learned about the necessity of selling things that I actually wanted to sell. Yep. Yep. Definitely not getting out of bed and being like, woohoo, I get to sell copiers. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was boring, but, uh, <laughs> but I sold some copiers. Sold some copiers. I made my house payments. I stayed alive. Yep, it was exactly. fine. Were you still in Duluth here? Uh, no, I had moved down to the cities. I um, see. Yeah. That was so, part of it. You're like, I like to move to the cities and whatever. Yep. Yeah. So, um, and then I, one of the accounts that I called on, uh, for selling copiers, um, was, uh, Tom James. Um, so they're a that is. custom suit company. Oh, and interesting. Okay. They were like, "Yeah, we don't need any copiers, but uh, hey, you ever thought about selling suits?" And I was like, <laughs> well, "Tell me more." Right. Um, Sounds so, easier to be set apart. Yeah. A it, different clientele. Different clientele, and it you know way more exciting. Did than you copiers. have a big beard back then? Oh God, no. Yeah, um, I wouldn't think that would really sell suits that no, much. No, clean, clean shaven. I usually shaved my head, not not like all down to the skin, but it was like you know really Tight. short. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, and I, and you're looking sharp all the time yeah. at that time, right? Suit, like wearing six a suit. days a week. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, which, uh, for those of you who can't see me, uh, if you're just listening on, on, you know, the podcast, I, uh, I have a long beard, I have long hair and, uh, you know, I look a baseball cap, a spider, very nice yeah. spider yeah. jacket Thanks. thing. I yeah. don't know, call it a fleecy jacket or something. Yeah, it's so, uh, you nice. know, but this yeah. is this is the uniform. This these Colorado, days. <laughs> right? We ha- we've worked hard to earn. I was a banker for a long time, and yep. I wore a lot of suits. I wore a lot of neckties, and now the once a year I wear a necktie, I'm like, that's fine. I don't. 
have to wear it every day. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, I got a closet full of nice suits, though, so right. every once in a while I'll throw one on. Yeah, I, I do too, but it's hard to button them sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so you're selling suits, having a good time, living yeah. in the cities. Yep. It was uh, it was cool. We did that for, hmm, I think I was there five years. Nice. And, and that's when I started Firestorm. Oh, um, wow. Okay. So it was during that suit time where I was kind of looking to build – that network of people, um, yeah. you know, again, I was kind of, uh, and there's a benefit for you. You're like, I'm going to get all the kind of rich people that I know together that I can, that are actually delivering B2B products because mm-hmm. they're the people that actually buy suits. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and they should time, connect with each other anyway. Yeah, they should. And, um, and so I had, I had looked for, <laughs> and everybody's always calling me asking who I know that does X. Yep. Yep. So, um, I had, I'd looked for other organizations to join. And there okay. was actually one of my clients that I sold suits to that owned an, an organization called Grapevine. Okay. And they don't exist anymore, but it was, you know, back in the day, um, it was kind of a, you know, local. One of those 1,000 yeah. different models. Yep. And uh, are still the same. And it was, it was good, you know, but it was, uh, it was a small organization in Minneapolis. And I um, went to, uh, Went to him and his partners, and I was like, hey, you know, if we made a couple of tweaks, um, this would be a lot better for all the members. You know, we'd get more business out of it. It'd be more efficient, yada, yada, yada. And they said, nah, we're good. We're not going to do that. And I was like, all right, cool. That's, you know, no problem. I'm yeah. going to just go over here and do it myself. So yeah. <laughs> um, my uh, my buddy Chris and I decided to start it up on our own. Okay. And uh, at the beginning, there was no... What were the tweaks? Can I ask? Yeah. So um, there was a little bit more to do with ideal client stuff and mm-hmm. a little bit more focus on, you know, being more intentional with the introductions and the referrals that we were making. And mm. so, you know, instead of just making introductions for introduction's sake, like, mm. hey, Kurt, here's this name of a person I met at Subway the other day. Like, Right. I, I he might need Loco Think Tank. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know, but, but I've better than a cold call right? i'm introducing you to him <laughs> <laughs> right yeah <laughs> okay. um n- not really uh, <laughs> no but... it's worse <laughs> <laughs> so because i got my hopes up <laughs> yeah 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 um i was like you know we should stop doing that and make actual you know meaningful introductions um be a lot better for everybody and uh they were like nah we're good so anyway um there was no business plan you know like we didn't start firestorm to like build a business we started it to really just get cool people that we wanted to do business with that wanted to do business a certain way together and um and so it started out as a happy hour and the the bar Mm. that we met at um was called majors and it was in golden valley minnesota and they uh Mm. we did a couple of yeah yeah, uh yeah so we did a couple of groups you know a couple of meetings there and then I think our third one, we had like a hundred people show up. Whoa! Yeah, and the, the bar was kind of mad at us because <laughs> they were understaffed, and like, we told them we were going to have twenty people there. And what blew it up so crazy like that? Just you know, you got to see this group. It's a little different than other things that people have done. I mean, this wasn't you didn't reinvent the wheel. No, no, it was not a reinventing the wheel at all. It was just you know, I think. There's a combination of things. Um, one, I mean, you mentioned the B2B thing. We didn't actually make the change to B2B until 2012. Okay. Um, so this was 2005, and mm. we actually were more on the consumer side of things. And mm. so um, I was selling suits, which is a very consumer-oriented right. thing. Right. Um, my buddy Chris, um, who's the co-founder of Firestorm, he wa- he owned a title company. Um, so he was doing residential title right. and then 2005, you know, <clears throat> peak of the real estate market. So like everybody's killing it, mm. running around, driving, you know, yeah, at least BMWs. Cars. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Stuff and like that. So, you know, and we're all young. I mean, we we're, I was 25 and, you know, Chris is a couple years older than me, but, um, you know, it was like that mid twenties to late twenties crew everybody's making money and, you know, living the 25. Living large. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and they just wanted to drink, you know, so like everybody <laughs> came out to party and there was always well, some like. craft beer was finally making its way to the cities. There was a little bit of that. Surly, you know. Yeah, absolutely. That And, and then, um, and the other thing was there was always some mortgage wholesale rep that would pick up the tab. 
and <laughs> so, <laughs> that's awesome yeah um oh so that was part of your model somebody's it, it, we didn't, just happened. You just didn't happened. make it. We didn't mean it to be that way. But, <laughs> but but there's some guy that's got some expense budget available still yeah. for March, and he's like, eh, I could have 60 people hear my name, yep. you know. Yeah. Interesting. So, it, yeah, it worked out pretty good. And so um, we did. Uh, we just did happy hours for a while. And then um, and then one day we were like, you know, maybe there's something more to this. We should, mm-hmm. like, start doing the regular group thing. And um, Yeah, put some structure behind it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we started doing um, – you know, a little bit more regular meetings. And then, um, it, uh, it started to grow from there and, you know, we've officially like became a business, you know, maybe nine months later or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, we actually, is you and Chris still, you worked together for quite a while on this. Yeah. Um, so, um, 2008, I moved to Arizona and I was running a couple groups in Arizona, okay. also selling suits down in Arizona. Okay, yep. Um, and then he was running Minneapolis. And then um, I came back to uh, Minneapolis in 2009, and I actually got out of the suit business in uh, March of 2009 and decided to do Firestorm full-time. Okay, So, yep. um, Yeah, so that, that was kind of the start of the full-time Firestorm. And he decided not to... Yeah, full time or whatever. Lost interest in along the way. A he little was bit. doing other stuff. You know, the title right. company um, thing had kind of uh, fizzled out, and he went on to some other like medical consulting things that he was actually his um, forte is. And he, actually, nowadays he's like one of the top three experts in the world on mm. you know like healthcare um, information management so, okay like yeah. what kind of system you should use for your organization kind of stuff yeah 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 and like the big you know he's like a software architect right for, right you know state governments and stuff so. so he's not feeling all butthurt because you kicked him out of firestorm or no, anything no, no like no. that he was yeah. like here you go you could have it and he's still got a little this. piece of it so okay. you know eventually yeah. when you know if you we, have a big exit yeah yeah he's yeah. gonna i i have actually a number that i want to get um, because I know what his piece of it's going to be. And I have, this is a little, like, I don't know, this is, it's such a dumb thing, but, um, he was employee number 12 at a, another startup and he made a good amount of money from that. Um, and I know what the number is and I also know the founder of that business. Yeah. And I want, I want him to make more money from my business than he did from, from your <laughs> exit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Is that your dream? Like you'd love to scale this to be something pretty significant and hire some professional management that some private equity wants to come in and snap you up or maybe it's another founder uh, that would like to roll you up with his yeah it's uh i haven't really thought that far ahead i'm still you know in the building phase um so whatever that looks like and and i think from a from a founder perspective it's it's kind of a cool feather in your cap to say that you have had an exit Um, and you've gotten, you know, you've sold a business. Um, but from a lifestyle and financial perspective, I don't know that it's I have no real interest in selling it right now. Yeah. And you know, it's, if you've built it the right way, um, you know, it should run pretty efficiently with minimal effort, you know, like that's, that's why you build businesses right like you know, I'm, yeah I'm not, not so you can work extra hard all the time yeah at a job you don't really like yeah so it could just wind up being like a portfolio company so hmm. yeah fair yeah um well good luck in that path what's your next <laughs> steps you want to get fort collins open this summer is that right yeah fort collins is on the on the list um you know i think nate is really focused on this northern corridor so um, Loveland and and Longmont and maybe even Cheyenne. Any of those communities could be, but they would be individual groups. It wouldn't individual be necessarily groups. together. Yep, exactly. Yep. So yeah, although Johnstown could probably be a Loveland. Yeah, that businesses could. could join that or probably already do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you know Greeley is out there. And yeah, so, it's kind of its yeah. own thing, right? Yep. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's the path, and and I think Denver uh, Metro has a lot of room to grow. Mm. Um, and there's, uh, you know, we've, we've dabbled in other states. Um, I think I'm kind of done with that for a little bit. I'm yeah. Just focus yeah. on Colorado I'm looking right now. my wounds from previous efforts to scale yeah. myself. <laughs> it's, it sounds cool, you know, and then you get into it and you're like, oh, God. Ugh, this boner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so what's the, what's the commitment 
like uh or do you not publish that necessarily for a do you have to sign up for a year a couple I, years is it thousand bucks couple you know yeah. how, what's the cost to it, it Round round numbers, it's a couple thousand bucks, and and I really expect people to be part of it for a year. For a year, yeah, gotcha. Um, and I think that ideally, you know, I mean, our historical numbers, you know, our average members with us for you know three or four years. Yeah. Um. So you know, I don't need people to say you know like I I shouldn't have to say you're here for a year because you know I know that based on our experience, it's three or four, but. Yeah, um, yeah. But I really want people to have that long-term focus, right? It's not yeah. something you can dip your toe in the water and you can show up for a quarter right. and say, well, let me reevaluate after three months. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is a long-term commitment. And yeah. building a network of, of people is is a long play. I always tell people, uh, we hope you, well, we want you to, to think you'll be here for at least a year when you join local, mm-hmm. but give us 30 days notice if it's not working. Yeah, yeah. Whether that's two years in or six months in or your mom just got diagnosed with cancer and I'm going to, I love it, but I'm going to leave, you yeah. know? Yep. Yeah. Anyway, I digress, but that's, that's the mentality. Cause it does, whether it's your, you know, the, the relationships of your organization or ours, like it just takes a while for people to understand each other. Yeah. hundred percent. And, and for change to proceed or to know whether people are for real. Yeah. And you know, it, do you ask people to leave sometimes if you find out somebody's a, not a good fit, or do they self-elect? Um, it, very rarely, because we have a good application process. Okay. Um, but every once in a while, somebody slips through the cracks, and you know, I'm like, ooh, that, that shouldn't happen. Uh, but, Usually, after two or three other people in that group leave, and you're like, hmm, what's going on over there in yeah. Lakewood? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, but luckily, it's it's really rare, and it uh, I don't like having those conversations. It's, yeah. you know, it's never fun. So for anybody involved. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think, um, the whole, you know, it's, it's hiring is the same, you know, it's like slow to hire, quick to fire. Yeah. Um, same deal with adding new members, you know, mm. slow to add them quick to get rid of them. So, so people visit once or twice even, and then whatever you, you sign them on, does your membership get feedback? Hey, we, Kent visited. Do you guys like Kent? Yeah. Should I bring him back again? Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and then, um, there's a whole like application on the website that you know oh, they, so people they, get a pre, they have to answer all these questions and, and then it gets submitted to the chapter the chapter gets notification um they get to vote you know oh, there's wow. you know a whole online system where they vote and so then, you got some pretty good tech associated have you built that yourself or built, are you white yeah. labeling something? no we built it all custom okay it says i i started building it in 09 um actually the first website we had in back in 05 was uh an iweb okay. page yep. um and uh and then we started building custom stuff in in 09 and just really um i couldn't find anything that did exactly what i wanted and yeah. after a few attempts to cobble something together i was like you know what we just need to do this on our own and wow. make exactly what i want hmm. So, Interesting. Yeah. I'll have to check it out sometime. Totally. Cause I mind, you know, I'm just cobbled together with, you know, I got a good website and background yeah. systems and stuff, but nothing that really does yours is yours also a communications platform for the membership to each other or um, not, not that yet, not that yet, but it's an option. And I just, um, we've experimented with, you know, uh, adoption of that. And, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, yeah, I don't want to do a bunch of stuff that nobody's going to use. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, th- and that's really tough for me because I'm an idea guy, you know, like I get excited <laughs> yep. about it. And I'm like, Oh dude, it'd be so cool if we could do this. And, right, right. and then you realize like nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> I recorded <clears throat> the meetings early on in Loco Think Tank. Yeah. Like literally like set a tape recorder on the table, uploaded that to my wordpress.org website. Yeah. Did that for months yeah and i'm not sure i think i found out like basically nobody ever listened to it like right. me a couple times <laughs> and, and yeah. maybe one other person once right yeah 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 it's nobody always frustrating when oh you're... it's so much work too yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah, yeah all that upload time and stuff anyway yeah no i, I digress get, yeah no i get it um so where does uh this pivot to b2b come and did you start the B to C thing right at the same time. No, and, um, is, and is Firestorm still up in Minnesota too, in Arizona, or anything there, or is that? Yeah, um, you focused geographically when you moved here. That's 
where I'm at. Yeah. So, so, um, I'll real quick. The, Sorry, lots of questions. Yeah, no worries. Um, <laughs> so it, it, they kind of go together though. So we, we did Minnesota, Wisconsin and, um, and Arizona. Those were kind of our first three states and we had groups going in all of those at the same time. At that point I was living in Minneapolis. Um, I moved to Germany for okay. a little bit. Um, and when I left, just for fun or chasing a girl, chasing a girl. Okay. Uh, now my wife. So it worked out. Oh, good. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> was worth it. Yep. Totally worth it. Uh, so we, I, I, I needed to go do that. So I hired somebody in Minneapolis to run it. And when I left, we had 30 groups in Minnesota, um, and a couple in Arizona and, and, um, a couple of Wisconsin. So, um, I went to Germany and when we came back from Germany, we moved to Miami. Okay. Um, and then Miami was when we made the change to B2B. Okay. And the Minnesota uh, location and Arizona and Wisconsin didn't fare so well. Um, that was a very poor hire on my part. Uh, I learned a lot of lessons on that one. <laughs> right. Um, you know, namely, uh, I, I, I knew in my gut that it was the wrong thing to do. This was how long and how much did they shrink it by? Uh, one year? It was a year, and it went from thirty to like three. Oh, whoa. Um, yeah, it was bad. So, it it was it was painful. I want to zoom in. You said you knew in your heart or in your gut before you left that it was the wrong person for it. Yeah, yeah, and I um, it was just one of those things where I you were desperate. I was desperate, and I thought I really wanted to believe that his enthusiasm mm-hmm. for the business would trump all of his shortcomings. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't. Yeah. And I knew it wouldn't, you know, but I I did it anyway and it was a it was a painful decision, but um good, you know, lessons learned, right? Yeah. And and I complain about this stuff to my dad, um who by the way, you know, I mentioned before he's not a business guy, he's a real right, right. man. And anytime I have a big loss and I'll complain about it, he's like, well, it's tuition in the school of life. <laughs> right. Like, damn it. That's, that's really good. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, so we were in Miami. Um, I started groups there. I, I built up eight groups in Miami and we, um, we in had like a, a year or a few years. Yeah. It was like a year and a half. <laughs> wow. Um, and then I, I started to kind of think about like, because I was reconsidering what I was going to do with my life. You know, do I still want to continue on with Firestorm? Do I yeah. want to do something else? You know, there's some other opportunities out there. And I started to think, um, what really makes me happy? What do I, ex- you know, gets me excited about Firestorm? What am I trying to do with this whole thing? Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And you I really... You kind of narrow your pointer a little bit. Yeah. And and I really started to, to um, think... I like small businesses. You know, I love helping small businesses. I've been a small business owner multiple times and, you know, I just, I like that piece of it. And I didn't necessarily love the consumer side of things. I didn't, Mm -hmm. I didn't love, you know, the Mary Kay ladies and the, you know, nothing wrong with that. Right. I I cut my teeth on Cutco, you know, like there's, I'm a hundred percent supportive if that's what you want to do for your, you know, your business. But I didn't enjoy the conversations. There was a different kind of conversation that I would have with people that were, you know, selling to other businesses. It's a more complex sale. It's less emotional. It's there, there's mm-hmm. all this other stuff that's involved in it. And I got excited about that piece of it. So um, there was a friend of mine um, who owned a Sandler franchise in Miami. Mm-hmm. And he was like, hey, man, you know, you should just make it business to business. Like there's a there's a hole in the market for that. You know, mm-hmm. like we need more, you know, strictly business, strictly business, business stuff. Yeah. Because, like, you know, at that point, you'd go out to events that were just a hodgepodge of everybody. And, you know, the guys that are selling um, to businesses don't really care they about... They don't want to be there, even. Yeah. They're like, oh, if, I, if I have to talk to one more Northwestern Mutual sales guy, you know. Um, <laughs> right. So so I was like, okay, that makes sense. Let's do business to business. And so we, we made the change to 100% B2B. And we kind of... We still had some groups that were... From the old school, you didn't kick people out. I didn't kick them out. I just kind of let them run their course. Yeah. And then, um, so we were in Miami for a couple of years, and then my wife and I decided to move here. Okay. And and we came to Denver in 2014, and and then made it, um, you know, 
clean slate. It's like when you go to college, you can be anything you want. And yeah, like, yeah. Firestorm is B2B. <laughs> so, uh, I like it. Yeah. Anything left in Florida? No. That was, Just kind of uh, let that go to whatever. Yep. There isn't enough value that you can add to them necessarily Yeah, that, from it, afar. It's really – I disagree with that statement, but – it is a hard, it's a challenge. You weren't ready yet yeah. to do and, that. And it, yeah, it's, it's weird. You know, yeah. when you're not, when you don't have a physical presence, people really feel like they're an island. And it's, uh, even if it's not objectively any different, the value yeah. that you're bringing, yeah. you know, because really what I do is build a system, you know, and, and <laughs> yeah. like give yeah. you the system to build a group. Yeah. Um, right. And why does, why do I have to be not very far away for that to really work? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very it's interesting odd. how uh, when in when in 2014, what month in 2014 did you get here? We got here in May. So February of 2014 was when Local Think Tank effectively started. I oh, just cool. went okay. nine years. So nice. You were kind of clean slating it from there, yeah. and uh, we have much different models, but a lot of similarity in client base, demographic, mm-hmm. and just journey. I'm getting. Uh, I am the bottleneck T-shirts. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you about that. <laughs> that's awesome. I think that's um, and and it's the same. You know, it's you, but it's also each of your groups in some ways. Most of the members of them, even for a salesperson that's just with a big company. Yeah, you're still the bottleneck in your own performance. Yep. Even if you're a high school teacher, yeah, or a mailman. Yep. Yeah. That's so awesome. Man. Anyway, I digress. I love those. Um. So your dream remains, I guess, to to maybe turn that 18 into 35 up and down the front range of Colorado and then start talking more about Miami groups or Omaha groups. Or yeah. Do you have a notion about where you would like to go from there? Do you want to stay? Like, I've been imagining in the my past, like, yeah. hey, I should go to Cheyenne or Steamboat or Colorado Springs. You know, maybe stay out of Denver because it's too big an elephant to bite off for sure. my local community kind of centric group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe just go to Florida where there's, you know, 30 towns that are communities into themselves with 50 or 200,000 or 500,000 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I um, I don't 100% know the answer to that question, but I, I do think I like the kind of mid-market towns. Like, I'm not you know, we're not a good fit for New York or Chicago or LA or, you know, even Seattle seems large, um, Yeah. you know, but, but the Minneapolis's, the Denver's, the Austin, San Diego, you know, even Omaha, Omaha, like Boise, Idaho, right. You know, that kind of stuff. Okay. You know? So, um, where there's enough of a community to still be a community. Yep. But not too small to have those kind of businesses yeah yeah exactly so, so it was fort collins like we're we're approaching that size i suppose right yeah i think fort collins is great you know yeah. i i it's not gonna um you know it's not gonna support 50 groups or something but you know we, we <laughs> right. could probably have like five right and, fair. and that's a that's a fine little business you yeah, know, yeah. satellite piece of a, a larger metro area are there going to be opportunities like do people earn income like by launching and managing groups or do they just get kind of free membership or something or yeah. like what's the motivation for people to start groups? So um, the the motivation should be and um, I think is the the ability to build something around your you know, yeah. interest. You're the gravity of it. You're the gravity of it. You're going to um, sell more office furniture. Exactly. And Whatever. you can you can hand pick the people that are in that core group of people, right? Mm-hmm. So the people that are really gonna move the needle for your business, mm-hmm. you know, you're really good strategic partners. So you're adding value to them by being the organizer. You're adding value, you're receiving a lot of value because those people are out talking to your ideal clients, you know, there's there's a strategy in who you get in the room mm-hmm. to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um so I think that's really the biggest piece of it. And then kind of putting yourself as the nucleus of that and you know, being the contact um for reaching out to people and any incoming inquiries and all that kind of stuff. And there's yeah, an man. elevated status, you know, that goes along with that. And then we do like chapter president meetings where all the chapter presidents get together. Mm. You know, we've got a lunch on Monday. There's a network there too. Yeah. You know, and that kind of like gets you out to these other, uh, this other group of people. So, um, you know, but they do as a, you know, thank you for your service to the organization, get free dues. Um, that shouldn't yeah. be the reason they do it, but for sure, you know, for sure. 
Um, well, in, in local think tank, I've got facilitators that are the organizers, and they actually kind of work for it, and they don't need to sell anything. Yeah, they're not interested. So you know, over a third of my revenue, or roughly, goes to them. Cool. Um, where you don't really have that impediment, you can kind of the revenue is a revenue. Yeah, yeah from yeah. a new client. Yeah. So, um, but you know, there's uh, as we expand into these other cities, you know, that's. An, an right, option, like know? potentially, like, hey, if I can find somebody that's the right connector in Austin, yep, maybe they should have more incentive than just being a satellite because right. it's hard to be bigger. Yeah, I'm the bottleneck. Yep. yep. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those are all those are all options. But you do have more win-win-win on that, or you know, there's intrinsic individual benefit from putting that group of fifteen together or whatever. Yeah. 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 And and you know the. Um, the chapter president usually has, uh, you know, their own business that they're trying to grow. And right. so that's um, their focus, not Firestorm. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's I, I want that to be their focus. Yeah, so. fair. Yeah. Um, anything else in the business journey that we should? I feel like I've been played Inquisitor number one here because, <laughs> well, because I've been I, I went to one online Firestorm meeting, got okay. invited to the Johnstown group at some random point. Yeah. You know, I've hung out with Nate a couple of times. I'd, You know, for me, you know, selfishly, I think it'd be great to have a Firestorm group or two or three here. Yeah. Because it's a nice little concentration of business to business owners. Yep. I could fish right from your pool. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, exactly. <laughs> Basically. I mean, and yeah. we could bless each other. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. let's keep talking about that. Um and yeah, I like what you've built. I think it's very Thanks, thoughtful. I um, and uh, so, when did you turn into a long beard kind of <laughs> uh, non-suit wearing guy? Uh, so I gave up the suit after 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 I got out of the suit business in '09, um, and I kind of there was a gradual transition. You know, when we were in Miami, I still wore them a lot, um, and then when we got here. I was like, ooh, I'm the fish out of water here. If I, you know, like I, I put on a jacket and went to Boulder one time and they were like, uh, are you going to a funeral later? <laughs> um, so <laughs> after I got that, I was like, okay. Yeah. I guess I can wear what I want now. Here. Yeah. So the uniform now is, you know, kind of jeans and a button down um, or a know, sweater or a sweater know, whatever. Or yeah. So um, and then I started the girl in the beard out in pretty much when we got here you know i shaved it for my wedding we got married in february of 2015 okay um i shaved for my wedding and then i haven't shaved since and she's cool yeah uh and it's kind of funny like because you know we talk about this and she was like i never thought that i would date anybody no less marry somebody with long hair or facial hair right (laughs) so um got both (laughs) surprise yep (laughs) i like it well um let's take a short break and then we'll come back and jump into the closing segments sounds good all right thanks this episode is sponsored by loco think tank loco think tank provides peer collaboration for business owners we build smart safe places to help business leaders navigate every stage of the business journey and we love what we do and who we do it with Our model features gift back minded business veterans in the role of loco facilitators, and we're always looking for abundance-minded individuals to add to our membership, facilitator team, local community, or to feature on this podcast. Listeners of this podcast who go on to become members of Loco Think Tank get their sixth month of membership for free. Just mention the Loco Experience Podcast on your application. To learn more, visit our website at locothinktank.com. That's L-O-C-O thinktank.com. And we're back. So when we left, um, we were talking about all things business. And some word you said along the way made me realize that you um, became a runner along this journey somewhere. Oh, yeah. And I want to hear about, or maybe it was always from the beginning, where you were like a runner in high school, running around from house to house selling Cutco. Yeah, pretty much. Not that, yeah. No. Um, Yeah, I I think I I had always kind of run um, like short distances for working out. But Mm. the first like major thing that kind of got me into, you know, air quotes running as a endeavor um, was when I was living in Duluth and I just got this idea that I needed to run a marathon. Mm. And I don't know what it was, if I read an article somewhere or just was like... Well, because I've lived in Minnesota. People don't really 
run there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if if you're like a really active runner, usually you live somewhere else. Yeah, 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 right. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what it was, but I got this uh, idea in my head that I was needed to do a marathon, and <laughs> it was a bucket list thing. And so I started training for one, and I went from like nothing, you know, couch to marathon in a 16 week program. Oh wow! And um, and I ran a marathon, and I couldn't walk the next day, and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> right. And then a couple days later, I was like, "Huh, I bet I could beat my time." <laughs> and i like it so that started the whole and you're thing. like 24 ish or something like that yeah i was 24 20... that first time okay and then uh you know it just kind of became a a sickness and i was like now i need to go faster and farther and so you're on ultras now now i'm doing ultras yeah. um i didn't do that until we moved to colorado and you know i was always a road runner <laughs> marathoner um, now you're a trail runner more. Now I'm a trail runner. and So much more fun, isn't it? Like the mental game. Yeah, the mental game and like the scenery and, you know, you see all these animals out there. And, <laughs> right. You know, just me and my thoughts. Like, it's great. Well, and not just, I feel like when I'm road running, it's just me and my thoughts is me going, run faster, you wuss. Run faster, <laughs> yeah. you wuss. Like, there's nothing. But when you're running on a trail, it's like. You don't step on that rock. Make sure you lift your foot up over that one, because yep. if you've run trails, you I'm sure you've taken more than a few falls where you're like, "Well, that was stupid. I just did this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for sure. I was shuffling out there when I needed to lift my feet up. You know, yep. and it's every every second really you got to be yeah. paying attention to not crash. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you can't zone out the way you do on a road. Right, and and then when you're zoning, you're just kind of like it's you're out of the game more. Yeah. yeah so yeah. anyway, I I like trail running a lot more. So what is your what's your biggest race you've run? And um, do you do it competitively? No, um, Most I'm for sport. I'm just for sport and keep in shape. You know, lets me drink more beer and yeah. eat some cheeseburgers. Um, but uh, I'm like you know I'm middle of the pack maybe. Yeah. Uh, so my my. Longest completed race okay. is a 50 miler. Um, I've done the the Silver Rush 50 up in Leadville. Okay, like yeah, three times, That's four a times. High elevation then too, right? Yeah, high elevation, a lot of you know up and down elevation gain. Um, and then I attempted the Leadville 100 last year, um, mm. and I didn't finish. So I've got a score to settle with that race, and I'm <laughs> going back this year again to like attempt it. it. So. Well, you would be my I'm, myself and a handful of friends that are really not runners are going to run the Wild West Relay this year. Oh yeah, uh, Mandy Mullen has taken that race and the Fall Foliage race okay. on. Um, and Mandy finished the Leadville 100 last fall. She That's was awesome. on my podcast uh, back in November or so. So, anyway, if you're interested in being the ringer on our team, whereas you're a middle <laughs> of pack guy in most of your running, yeah. you know, just let me know. We'll talk about it later. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Love it. <laughs> it's a great race, a relay race, 12 person relay or a six person or less if you're an ultra guy. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, from Fort Collins to Steamboat. Oh, nice. Over right. Dead Man's Pass and down the Lever- Laramie River Valley. Sweet. And it's really a cool race. Okay. Uh, so I'll tell you more later. Yeah, yeah, let me know. Um, and plug for anybody that likes to run a long, long ways far, uh, yeah. the the Wild West Relay is, a, is an amazing race to choose. So Cool, okay. Um, awesome. Let's get into the closing segments. We've got uh, Faith, Family, Politics. Uh, do you have a first preference <laughs> on either, any of those? Uh, it's family. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tell me about this lady that uh, uh, tolerates your beard so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's amazing. Um, her name is Jerry, and we... Uh, Jerry with a... G. Okay. Yeah, it's Jerry Ann. Um, and her uh, grandparents, her, her dad's parents were both Jerry's. They were Gerald and Geraldine. Oh, interesting. And, yeah, so, um, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> she... She and I met at Oktoberfest in Munich. <laughs> Sorry. You're t- t- okay. <laughs> I like it. So um, we uh, were, I-, I was there on vacation. Is she German? Um, she, yeah, a little bit, but not not German. German. She was like, just there visiting she, like you. She was actually working there. Um, so she worked for Allianz, a big insurance company. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she was wor- living there for a couple of years. And um, she's actually from Seattle, though. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, it, you know, 
I guess it's a, a bit of a networking success story, you know, one of those, uh, you know, friend of a friend referral kind of things. So um, I, I just have to say this, you know, since we were talking about the work stuff, it, it's a little bit related. When I started Firestorm in Minneapolis and I was selling suits, um, I met, you know, a bunch of guys because of the suit selling. One of them was my co-founder, Chris. And that's sure. how we met was, you know, the suit business. Yep. And then um, he was part of that uh, other startup that I had mentioned and made a bunch of money on. Um, and one of his coworkers was this dude named Thats. And Thats uh, is from Sri Lanka. Um, hmm. And they worked together. And then I got introduced to Thats. And he was a client of mine. And then we started hanging out and became friends. And so when I got the opportunity to go to Germany to go to Oktoberfest, um, it was for another reason. I was actually leading a marathon team over there to run the Berlin Marathon. And, okay. Um, but I called my, my buddy Chris um, and I said, hey, you know, you got to come to Germany with me. We're going to go drink some beer. And um, at that time, uh, Thats had actually w- was working for Allianz. And Allianz mm. Life headquarters is in Golden Valley, Minnesota. Okay. So um, that's worked for Allianz Life, got transferred to the mothership in Munich. Yeah. And and then Chris and I were like, hey, we're going to go drink beer. Hey, let's see Thats while we're there. See Thats while we're there. So we look Thats up. He's showing us around. And he was like, hey, I I got this, you know, group of coworkers, bunch of girls. They got a table at this tent. Let's go check it out. And so we go to the tent and I meet my wife and, uh, the rest is history. So <laughs> was it love at first sight? Like it was just like that. Hundred percent. It was. Yeah. I, I used to on make... both of your parts. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a long. That's a whole another podcast. Part of why I had to move to Germany and let my business get destroyed was to prove. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, um, I did make a very hasty decision to go chase after her because I, I was convinced that it was this was the one. So, um, I, I met her. Uh, changed around my travel plans in Germany and I spent a, um, four or five days with her. And then I came home to Minnesota and I sold all my shit and moved to Germany. No shit. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and I, she was like, why did you come here? <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, I assume it was a little. Yeah, there's. It wasn't far off though. She was like, "I thought we were gonna like, you know, date for a while." Right. You know, like, yeah, long distance relationship, something, something. Yeah. No. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah. That sounds like a very, like, prudent in the long run, but impulsive kind of a maneuver. You've been kind of living a measured life for most of it up until this point. It seems like, or at least it feels like. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, for the most part. Although you do say, you know, why don't I just run a marathon? I've never. Nobody's ever really talked about a marathon in my presence before, but I saw one on TV once. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, I think there's uh, there's something that I got in my head, you know, I, I don't know when or, you know, I can't put my finger on it, but it was like, you know, if, if you want to do something, go after it. I mean, we, don't, we only got one life. Yeah, and yeah. I, uh, I'm not getting any younger and, you know, these opportunities don't come around all the time. And so, you know, got an idea to start a business let's go yeah you know, got yeah. got a opportunity to meet the mm. girl of your dreams you know i gotta go to germany cool let's go well one thing that whether it's your future wife or even a, a member for a b2b group that's somewhat exclusive like people like to be pursued yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> you know men and women yep, yep alike uh and so i suspect that I, since you did end up winning i suspect that you were able to uh weather her defenses uh <laughs> and, and create some sparks there yeah 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 it was uh it was pretty funny so yeah i mean sometime over beers we'll we'll go through the whole story fair enough <laughs> what was it uh about her that just made you ready to change your whole life i don't know other than that just that drive this is the girl for me yeah it was weird like i you know i it, I think I kind of thought that was a bunch of BS, you know, when you meet somebody and it's just like, oh my gosh, that's the person. Um, yeah. I really thought that that was nonsense. And then I met her and I was like, oh, that's, uh, that's, my that's, person. A, that's a real thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, and so can't really pinpoint it. It's just, no. it's just a thing. It was just a thing. Yeah. And I, uh, I remember because I, I started, I, I pulled fats aside immediately and I was like, hey man, are you like trying to, you know, 
<laughs> you don't have dibs or anything, right? <laughs> and he was like, no, 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 totally good. Um, and then we started, um, I, I knew it was a significant moment, so I, I actually opened up a note on my phone, and I, anything that she said I put in my phone. And I was like talking to, you know, family stuff and her birthday and, you know, like the little questions that you kind of – ask and 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 then before we spoke again i memorized all of those things (laughs) yeah um it was weird and the other crazy thing is i remember that day um crystal clear and Hmm. although some people may argue with me about that because what i'm about you were at oktoberfest i had i had 10 liters of beer and um (laughs) so but that you know i i remember the whole day day, yeah so yeah i like it you guys have had littles in the meantime too, is that right? You have children? Yeah. Um, so we have a, a son, Tico. Okay. And he is uh, just over a year and a half. Um, nice. Yeah. So it's like it's at that point where you know he's just I, turning into Tico. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, he's hilarious. Um, full of energy. Just. And um, what's your one word description for Tico? Energetic. Just energetic. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, and and well, if I had to, you know, elaborate, elaborate, I, but um, like, I would say even more so, like enthusiastic. Mm. Just like everything he has a zest for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that'll yeah. that'll serve him well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's been super fun, and uh, you know, we're older parents now, right, right, and, right. Um. So it's in my way. You may or may not have another one. Well, um, oh, my, she's pregnant my right wife now. is pregnant. So <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. So we've got, uh, we've got second one on the way and, uh, now, I mean, you guys like met a long time ago though. So did you decide late to pursue or, or yeah. were struggling for a while to get pregnant or both? Yep. Both. both. So we, um, we took a minute to, you know, before we actually decided that we wanted to do it. Yeah. And, um, you know, just like we had just met and we were in our early, early thirties when we met right? and just trying to like get our yeah. stuff figured out, you know, yeah. and, and life and moving and yeah, all the stuff. And then one day you're like, you know, we're, we're 39 and 38 or whatever. Yep. Yep. Right. You're like, if we're going to do this thing. Yeah. Time to go. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much how it happened. And then you're like, we went and it didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. My, my wife and I don't have kids. We miscarried once mm-hmm. and, you know, at some point kind of decided that we weren't going to work extra on it and have hosted a lot of exchange students. Yeah. So, by the way, which I would recommend that for especially older parents like you guys. Yeah. Like, get an exchange student to watch those littles once they get to be four, five, six, because they love it. Yeah. They, and they can't, they can't get paid anything. They're not a citizen. <laughs> so you can just be like, right. hey, we're going out for date night. Watch the kids. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. And clean that, the house. That's actually not a bad idea. We we, we, we actually have <laughs> an au pair. probably something illegal about what I just said, but. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, who whatever. Knows. We, we have an au pair right now. Oh, you do? Yeah. And oh, yeah. And she's from Italy. And it's yeah, perfect. amazing. So yeah. we'll we'll definitely do that. But yeah. I like the like Oh, pays even better because then they don't have school, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, anyway, I digress. It's been cool. I love the international experience. And it sounds like you do too. It's been a part of your life. Yeah. Um, what is, like, what's your travel? You Because you grew up poor, right? Like your dad was a postman <laughs> and stuff and yeah. whatever. Like you were probably Minnesota bound for your first 20-something years. Yep. And then... As it's still a single guy, you found yourself making six figure income. You're like, I can do stuff and yeah. go see cool places. Yeah, my first big trip was I actually earned with Cutco, mm-hmm. um, and we did a Spain trip for eight days, and mm. it was first class the whole way. Yeah. and I was an idiot because I was 20 and I didn't appreciate any of it. Right. Um, and so I, I think I I remember all the things that we had to eat and all the wine, and it was just like unbelievable and i didn't appreciate any of it yeah. because i didn't i didn't know for you it was the same as going to minneapolis for the weekend or something almost yeah yeah and i actually it was even worse because you know at least in minneapolis i could have got a cheeseburger and like a beer you know like i was drinking you know expensive wine and you know having like you know prawns and i'm like what the hell is a prawn and why are their eyes still on it you know like <laughs> <laughs> right um i didn't i didn't appreciate you didn't appreciate that, yeah. that cutco was dropping 200 bucks a plate no virtually or you know whatever an x amount per hotel room in this little spanish boutique inn yeah i i remember also um i had a hotel that had french doors that opened up onto a, a patio 
um, marble, by the way, marble patio, <laughs> right? Um, that overlooked the Mediterranean Sea. And I checked into the hotel and I looked around my room and I opened the door and I looked out and I was like, hey, there's the ocean. And then I shut the door and I never opened it again. I pulled the shades because I was going out partying till like eight in the morning. And then I'd sleep from like eight in the morning till Til it was four. time to start going partying. Yeah. And I just, no, no situational awareness at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> so yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. The next one was better. Yeah. 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 But, but yeah, I've been fortunate. We've traveled a lot. I, I think I've been to 25 countries and my wife's been the same. And, wow. Um, you know, a couple of them together and, um, that's, that's a, priority for us is you know traveling yeah. and seeing new stuff and yeah i dig it yeah so um how is your are your folks still around and family still in minnesota and stuff like that yeah i've got a big family they're spread out all over um but my my dad is around my mom passed away um the year that we moved here oh wow um so was that young. was yeah it was yeah she was 60 and it was uh you know pretty sudden thing so That's um right. yeah it was you know bummer things but happen things happen and yeah. you know move on but um yeah no it's uh i love my family and it's been a a blessing and you know everybody gets along really well and um one of the one of the benefits um or you know i guess you know silver linings of you know losing my mom was i became you know, a lot closer with that side of the family because hmm. um, they all kind of stepped in to help yeah, out. And, that's cool. Yeah, it's been cool. So um, I've got uh, I've got a really good support network in that regard, and just you know, the they're really cool. I yeah, like, I like having my family. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know, there's a couple oddballs, but you know. well, that's life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to talk about politics or faith next? Uh, let's go to politics. Some people do them both at the same time. <laughs> politics? Yeah, sure. So let's see, where are we at in the world? We've had, you know, we're, are we in World War Three? We could talk <laughs> macro first and then we sure. can zoom down. I don't think so. You don't think so? I it's a little know. settled down. Yeah. Just be another proxy Syria thing or something like that. Yeah. I, you know, I have to be honest. I, I pay so little attention. Really? I... I know that's probably bad, but I don't know if it is. It might be good. Um, you know, I don't want to be <clears throat> ignorant or you know ostrich, bury my head in the sand, and you know whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like um, you know we're in such a weird time, and I I really feel helpless to yeah. do anything yeah, about the things it. I can't control. Yeah. Why do I need to spend any brain space thinking about them? And I, I really feel like I need to focus on building my business and, you know, taking care of my family and supporting the people that are in my organization and the people that are in my network and the people that I'm friends and, you know, my family, like yeah. being a positive influ influence on them and, and, um, you know, really focusing on what I can control yeah. and then, and, and getting rich because at some point, you know, maybe the shit hits the fan and I want to like, I'm not... going to need enough resources not to have to eat bugs. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> um, you know, and is that the right move? I don't know. I just, I just want to be like prepared yeah. for whatever. And I, I'm not, you know, I'm not able to focus on building my business if I'm right. focused on, you know, whatever else is going on in the world. So. Right. Right. Well, and if you're, if you're like most business people, it's not like you've tucked a bunch of money away for retirement along the way and stuff like that. You're like, the thing I'm building is my yeah. plan. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a significant part of it, you know, like I, um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, uh, I've got opinions about, you know, a few things, but other than that, like I just. Would you like to share those? Well, I'm very libertarian. Like, you know, okay. I just. I don't just I want, leave me alone. I want to be left alone. I'll leave you alone. Yeah. Let's do our thing. And you know, I, and I, I love, I love people and I love having debates about stuff, intelligent debates. Like mm. if you've got a reason for believing something and you yeah. want to share that with me, awesome. Um, and if you can back it up with, you know, facts, even if I don't agree with them or, you know, you know, whatever, like that's fine. We can have a, a yeah. good conversation. The dialogical model of learning yeah. Is important. Yeah. Even when I'm wrong. Yeah. And, and, and if I'm wrong, I want to know that I'm wrong. You know, right, like I'm, right. I'm very interested in the truth, you know, like I'm not interested in, in thinking that I'm right. Um, I'm interested in what's actually right. 
Um, you know. Yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, I don't know. What uh, what do you th- like? The, the, one of the hardest challenges facing a thinking person is the climate situation. You know, sure. I'm a I'm a pretty small climate footprint guy. Yeah. And I'm an energy freedom guy. Yeah. I think you have to, you know, there's there's oil and coal and resources in the ground that people will die for trying to dig out of it unless they're, you know, killed trying to do it, right? Like, it's, it, I, yeah, anyway, what, where do you, where do you lie on that? Like, it's such a, like, the the beautiful thing, the best potential outcome would be that the combination of solar and wind and nuclear and battery storage mm-hmm. to have a level and available and non brown outable energy supply would find itself to be cheaper than most energy created by petrocarbon releasing atoms. Yeah. Right? I, I um there are a few words there that you said that I didn't understand. Um <laughs> but <laughs> but uh I really think that that's that would be amazing. You know, if we can, you know, build a system that actually, you know, could outcompete oil. Could outcompete oil. Um, I don't think it's anywhere on the horizon. A hundred years I think away. Nuclear is probably. Uh, we really need to give that a fair shake. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, they haven't built a new nuclear facility in it's, since the seventies. It's, it's asinine. Yeah. Um, you know, this whole fuel cell thing is very interesting, but I mean, how far away are we from that? Um, but yeah, they're, well, and batteries are terrible. Like they just don't yeah. really like car batteries are fine. You know, if you're going to use something every day regularly, but like storing large volume p- power in right. batteries, it just doesn't work. Yeah. And it would be like such a fragile storage of energy in case of actual war. Yeah. Oh, we just put the U S out of business. We bombed their four mega battery centers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but there's, I, I'm distributed microgrids. Talk to me about distributed microgrids. That I'm, seems well, like, I was thinking, uh, yeah. you know, and, and this is completely, I don't know anything about what I'm talking about. So yeah. like, you know, I'm sure you'll Sometimes get a bunch of comments. Sometimes is better. <laughs> um, but I think that if everybody, um, would take a little bit more, uh, responsibility of their own stuff. And say like, hey, you know, maybe I should, uh, you know, grow my own food. Maybe I yeah. should turn my front yard into a garden, and maybe I should, you know, get solar panels. Um, you know, even though I mean that's not, it's not super ideal. And I, I mean, I've run the math on it for my house. Like, it's, eh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not like super right. pumped about it. It's not like the, you know, the most amazing thing ever. But. Um, if I could be a little less reliant on, you know, a big right. company. If the big grid got yeah. blown up in some kind of a nuclear attack and you could have the power that your house generates. Yeah. I would take that. Totally. You yeah. Know? So for that reason, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I, I have a garden in my house, you know, in the backyard and I hunt and, you know, I like to be self-reliant. I want to know that if shit hits the fan, we'll be okay. Yeah. And I, I think if more people kind of took that approach and I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people that argue and like, well, everybody's not capable of doing that. Uh, kind of you are like, yeah. well, but even with a really good garden, like 20% maybe of your vegetables for the year. Well, yeah. but if you can and stuff, you could probably get up to half. You can can. And there's, you know, all sorts of like fermentation that you can, I mean, totally like I, I'm not saying it's like the answer, but you can just re- take pressure off it. Take pressure off. Be it. responsible for your own self fully. Yeah, as best you can. Yep. Um. So yeah, and and I think in the same respect, you know, energy. Like you know, I'm looking at building a house in the mountains, and you know, mm. it's gonna. I want it to be off grid. You know, geothermal, solar, mm. wind. You know, yeah. any anything that we can do to like not be, you know, reliant on somebody else. Because you think it's gonna. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I don't want to be all doomsday about it, but it just for my, yeah. my own personal, you know, peace of mind. Yeah. Just nice, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know it's probably not the most financially savvy thing to do, but I don't want to have a mortgage. You know, like money, mortgage money is cheap. All and right. it's, it's, it was it's, well, 
I mean, it's still in the historical averages, it's still cheap, but right. nobody wants to, you know, acknowledge, acknowledge that. that cause, yeah. yeah, I mean, that house that my my dad bought the first, you know, he bought a house in eighty six, eighty seven. I think it's oh, it was probably twelve percent or something. Yeah, twelve, twelve, thirteen percent, something like that. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. Um, but uh, and yeah. it was the start of if he hadn't bought that house, it would have been less good for him probably. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, there's a lot of things that I want to do for my personal peace of mind that maybe in the grand scheme of things, you know, wouldn't, you know, like you can leverage yourself up and, you know, borrow money against your house. And Today's debt is tomorrow's equity. Blah, blah, blah. But I, <laughs> you know, I just don't like to be beholden. You want to be anybody. independent in all the ways that that means. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, and I guess that's your politics in general. Like, like because of that, you've got to be at least a little bit skeptical of things like WHO treaties and uh, what's the World Economic Forum kind of elements and disarmament things. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it all makes me a little, you know, a little uncomfortable. But um, <laughs> on the uh, so, I like to say that there because Democrats are both authoritarian and libertarian. Right now, in in today's world, especially, they're yeah. like, we can do anything. We can. I'm a man. I can be a woman, or whatever. All these different things, and you cannot misbehave. Otherwise, you're gonna you're a terrible person, and you're gonna go to whatever their version of hell is. Right. Yeah. And Republicans are both authoritarians and libertarians in terms of like behavior and things like that. And then, so so that's what I like to say is that the really the spectrum is authoritarian and libertarian, which which end of that spectrum are you on? Uh, Everybody should do their own thing, or there should be a I, big I, boss. No, I really, I really like everybody do their own thing. Like, and I, I know there's, again, you know, uh, there's reasons some people think otherwise. Yep, and and I'm, I understand some of those arguments. Would the power forces just aggregate and like chew up all those libertarians eventually? Like, I mean, that's the big problem, right? Like, libertarians can't raise any money because nobody wants to pay for a government that they want to not exist. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it, it is a little bit of a conundrum. And there, uh, you know, there's a lot of power hungry people that, you know, enjoy that, uh, you know, authoritarian right. stuff, you know. Um, so there's no easy answer. And a lot of police officers, right? Like there's really awesome police officers that feel like they've been blessed and they need to protect those that are weaker and it's a service hearted kind of thing. And there's a lot of hungry, power hungry, like little man syndrome police officers that the first thing they want to do is have you lip off. Yeah. So they can put you in your place. Yep. I, uh, yeah, that one, that one's You've experienced both. I've experienced both, and I have a brother, a uh, stepbrother that's a cop. And uh, Is he, which of, is he? He's very, he's very cool. Okay, good. He's very cool. <laughs> he just wants to help people. Good. Um, and he's super smart. And, and he's super annoyed when there's all these other cops that are like little freaking yeah. Napoleons. Yeah, it's, uh, he does not appreciate that, so. Um, but they're there in every force. Yeah. Um, I've beaten you up enough over politics. How about um, faith? Yeah, you have a faith background. You said you went to a Christian school. Yeah, back in the um, day, at least. Re- yeah, my uh, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, my upbringing, um, very, very Christian. Um, my mom was Catholic. Grew, you know, went to K through twelve Catholic school, um, and then my dad is, uh, you know, evangelical Christian. Yeah, yeah, um, and they. Uh, they raised us evangelical Christian until they got divorced. And then my mom, when we moved to a, uh, a small town, um, mm. there wasn't, you know. There wasn't uh, such thing as a private school option. Right. And but the public school was way better Public school was ways. great. I loved public school. Um, and then, it, we, you know, there wasn't a evangelical church, so th- we switched to a Lutheran church. Mm. So anyway. It's like halfway between anyway, kind of. Yeah. It's like um, Protestant and Catholic still quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was you know so religious upbringing, um, and then I kind of went rogue after um, college, during college, kind of thing during Cutco. Yeah, 
yeah, around around my after I got out of high school and when I moved out of my mom's house, I was kind of done with the the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and I did go back to I, I went back to college later in life. Um, I got my degree. Oh. Um, and uh, I kind of skipped over that part. Yeah, but, that's cool. Um, yeah. So I went back when I was twenty seven, graduated when I was thirty, and I went to a Lutheran college. Oh. Um, and then I did a very short consulting gig for a hot second at. Uh, Thrivent Financial for Lutherans. Oh, really? Yeah. I was a Thrivent rep for a little while. Oh, right? Yeah, after okay. I put my food trailer down, but before I could go full-time local think tank. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and they're now, they became Thrivent for Christians, and oh. now they're kind of Thrivent for everybody. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because there just aren't enough Lutherans anymore. You can right, have a yeah. life insurance company that isn't creating new <laughs> yeah. members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. good. Well, it sounds like you... You don't like have an axe to grind with Christians necessarily, no, uh, or even any distaste or distrust. Like no. there's a lot of people are like, "No, I'm not a Christian," and like those people are terrible. Yeah, no. Or never heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're kind of somewhere in between. Though. You're like you got a fair bit of awareness. So yeah, like what do you do with Jesus? I you know I I believe he was a real person and I. I think uh, the the stories are very educational, and you know, there's a lot of like good uh, principles that you can glean from all of. Those are useful. Yeah, it's very useful. Yeah. Um, I don't really buy into the whole, uh, you know, son of God thing. <laughs> Died, came up three days later, kind of thing. We're right. almost to Easter. It's like in two yeah. weeks yeah, from yeah, today. Yeah. yeah. So will you do anything for Easter? Uh, you know, Easter. We make a ham. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, it, it's tough. It's it's right. It's well, it's a tough. complicated kind of the transition from faithful to secular across the nations over time is mm-hmm. weird. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, and 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 being uh, brought up in such a, a faith based family, and you know, and now raising children. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing to navigate and, you know, like, how do you, how do you explain certain holidays and, you know, what do you celebrate? Why are we celebrating it? You know, it, what's the meaning behind it yeah, and, and, yeah. you know, navigating the... Is Oktoberfest the same as Easter? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Where is Jerry coming uh, from um, that perspective? So she was raised Catholic and, okay. you know, we're kind of in the same boat now. Yeah. So it's, uh... Yeah, it, it's it's interesting, and I I get if you couldn't sense uh, uncomfortable about it because yeah, yeah. Um, I I think that everybody I like I like the principles I like what it does for people I like the community aspect of it I like the um, having something to bigger gu- than me and bigger than that. me and guide yourself and you know blah blah blah. Um, but that's where it stops for me. Yeah. And um And the organizations have messed it up. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like I mean, not to pick on the Catholics, but yeah. like there's a big whole unreconciled scandal thing there. Yeah. yeah. And then with I... lots of bad actions by abusers and their overseers. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, you know, when you've got family that are so entrenched in that yeah. Um. It doesn't make for fun conversations. So I, yeah, you know, I yeah. usually just bite my try to avoid that topic. Let people believe what they want. Well, like, and like, how does Tico like get appreciate those real standards of of ethics and mores and yeah things like that? Like back in the days of the Greeks before anybody really heard of Christians and stuff, they were chewing on this and everybody's chewed on it forever. Yeah. And right now in the absence of Christendom, it's kind of like, do you want Christendom or anything goes? I, I don't a think... little bit. You don't think it's there. I think we're running on the fumes on the value side. Like once God is dead, then it's kind of like, I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but yeah, I don't see it like that. No. Um, I mean, there's, uh, I don't know how to articulate it. You know what? My brother's going to listen to this and he's going to yell at me later for not being able to articulate it. Um, he's a professor and he's going to, he's a philosophy professor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you could say that reason is it right? Like 
That's yeah. what like Sam Harris would say is that reason can get you to ethical behavior. Yeah. Uh, and altruism is fully explained by selfish motivations. Yeah. Or whatever, right? I don't buy it hmm. um, personally, but yeah, I, I I don't I don't know that um, you know like you you can be a uh, a good person and a good member of society and and uh, you know have values and sure. want other people to win and succeed and and you can love everybody and and that has nothing to do with Christianity. Yeah, for sure, for you sure, know? and. Yeah. I rewrote the uh, the Ten Commandments as the Ten Principles for Your Best Good. Yeah, a while back, and it was really just kind of modernizing the language around it. You know, be nice to your mom and dad. You know, yeah. be, be respectful. Do not murder. You know, it also includes cancel culture, right? Like if you're canceling somebody, whether it's online or in person, because of what they think or believe, well, that's basically killing them. It's murder. You know, yeah. if. If by looking at a sexy woman you're committing adultery in your mind, as Jesus said, which probably you would tend to agree, like it's hard to slice it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, so too is canceling murder, I yeah. think. I don't know. Yeah, I could see that. So that's what, and I think that's probably the better, like Jewish people that I've listened to, you know, uh, sin is missing the target. You've heard that descriptor for it probably before. Yeah. And so, like, what's the target? Do people have an innate sense of what the target is? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I think so. I think most people. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, um... I don't know. Like, when you were partying like a rock star in Spain and didn't know any better, you are young and dumb and whatever else... Like, were you missing the target? Did you know that you missed the target? Were you like, I partied until 8 a.m. every night. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, whatever. that's, uh, you know. Um, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I think my motivations were, you know, different. So I was hitting the target that I <laughs> that you set for yourself. Set for myself. Well, yeah. I think that's the, like, what should be the target. I think that's maybe the discussion that's missing yeah. a little bit in society. It It doesn't have to be like, where are you at in the believe in Jesus model? It's yeah. more like where are you at in terms of setting a target for yourself and attaining the target? Because right. you talked a lot about that. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so I guess that would be my challenge to you from a faith perspective. Whatever direction you go is to like intentionally set targets for Tico and this little one that hasn't even been born yet. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting conversation in in and of itself is just like, you know, what is the target? You know, yeah, and, and yeah. from a individual perspective, family, you know, business, country. Well, and I think that's why I use faith. I'm not yeah. asking to talk about Christianity. Yeah, I'm kind of more about what is it, the thing that you're setting your faith upon. What yeah. are you What are you pointing yourself toward? Yeah, and why? Yeah, without knowing if you're going to make it there or not. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or even giving yourself grace if you don't. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, fun conversation. Cool. Um, the loco experience. Yeah your craziest experience um of your lifetime that you want uh, to share. so i gotta come up with a different one because i told you about moving to germany to chase after a girl <laughs> right and your business shrunk from 30 to three <laughs> chapters <laughs> yeah. and whatever else um <laughs> yeah that's uh if you want to put more color around that one you can or if there's a, <laughs> a near-death thing or something you're welcome to expand um no, I, you know, I, I think that's one of the fun things about um, traveling is, uh, you know, you get into some situations where you're like, ooh, this is a little, you know, a little, oh, how this going to work sketch. out? Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I think, um, I think that that the story about meet my wife is probably the the craziest thing I've ever done, and um, it obviously turned out really well. But, yeah. Um, you don't have any regrets. I think that's really cool. No, I mean, like you could have carried a seed of bitterness around that, and it would have corrupted your relationship right from the start. Yeah, totally. Um, I think the the coolest thing about it was, you know, and I look back on, you know, why did it work and how did it work and all that, and you know, we being the circumstances that we met under um, really allowed us to kind of say and do whatever we wanted. You mm -hmm. know, like. There was no, yeah. I wasn't trying to posture and like, you know, have that first date, first date conversation where you're like, oh, this, you know, like the, the sanitized version of, you know, <laughs> me growing up. Right. Um, 
you know, our first date, you know, official date was um, in Prague. And I, I drove her to Prague and we had, which from Munich is like a six hour drive. And so we had all this time in the car and, you know, we just talked and, you know, I thought, what do I have to lose? You know, I'm never going to see this girl again. I'm going right. to go back to Minnesota. And if it sucks, then, you know, and she doesn't like me for who I am, then so be it, you know? And, and if she does, then whatever. Um, so I just was like, you know, super honest. And, yeah, yeah. and so was she. And then, you know, you kind of get all your dirty laundry out there and you're like, huh. oh, well, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah um and i think it really worked out well and so um it was it was pretty cool but it, yeah so just a little bit more on the um the the first time we met was at the oktoberfest tent and then i tried to take her on a date the next day and she shot me down and didn't return my calls and then finally i got a hold of her and she said um okay i'll go on a date with you and i wanted to meet her at hagen ice cream and she um, she agreed and then she turned it into a group date. So when we showed oh. up, it was like a bunch of people. Right. And I was like, Oh God. That's lame. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know, so I was at the end of that, I was like, listen, I still really want to take you on a date, but I'm leaving. I'm going, cause I had to be in Berlin a couple days later. Um, I was like, I'm getting a car. I'm going to drive to Prague tomorrow. You should go with me. And so she called in sick for work. Oh, and, cool. You know, drove with me to Prague. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was nuts, man. That's that far and away. That's the, that's the craziest thing. Did you, like, did you beat yourself up for a long time? Did you, did you give yourself forgiveness right away about the kind of the hiring of the wrong person to keep your business alive and going? Or were you like, hey, I got the girl. So it was worth, I mean, you had 30 groups. That was, I did. Probably a whatever, two hundred thousand dollar a year business or something like that up there. Yeah, yeah, we um, I, I did beat myself up about it, um, but I can't remember how long, but I think it was. It's probably longer than I should have, but looking back on it, I'm like, that's it was just a really good lesson, you know, yeah, about yeah. hiring people and you know trusting your gut. Um, you know, yeah. I think back to that book, um, Malcolm Gladwell, um, Blink. Yeah. And it's like, you, you know, immediately whether you're making the right decision or not. And yeah. you just, yeah. you know, you have to listen to yourself, whether it be a business decision or, you know, this person that you're going to go on a date with or, uh, you know. Even uh, taking tests. Taking tests. <laughs> a yeah. Lot of it's times. like, oh, the A was the right answer. And like, I second guessed myself and changed it to C. Right. Yeah. It, it, you, you know. And, um, there's a lot to be said about that and, and you just need to trust yourself and, uh, and it's hard, you know, especially when, um, you don't have a track record necessarily. Right. right. So, but you know, I'm 42 now, so I got, I got a bit of a track record and I'm like, I'm yeah. 99% right on my gut. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. So if it says something, I'm like, eh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, I guess, how do people find My Firestorm? Uh, how do they connect with you if they are a business-to-business -business prospect that should be in a group? Yeah, yeah. All, um, that, all that stuff. So I'm uh, on LinkedIn all over the place, um, Philip Pelto, just one L in Philip. And and then the business is My Firestorm. So it's, uh, you know, LinkedIn is My Firestorm, Instagram, you know, just go to LinkedIn. That's, yeah, yeah. You know, business people go to LinkedIn. Like, <laughs> is there a firestorm.com out there? There's myfirestorm.com. Yeah. There isn't an actual fire. I mean, there oh, is, but there is, somebody it, else owns actually, that real so, estate, I guess, or something. God, so just really quick back. Um, we filed the LLC paperwork and for my firestorm in May of 2019 or sorry, sorry, 2009. Okay. Uh, May of 2009. Yep. yep. And I went to buy firestorm.com because at that time somebody was, squatted on it. Well, they hadn't squatted on it. It's another business and it's still oh. very successful business. It's a, um, like a disaster mitigation company mm, or something based mm -hmm. in Atlanta and they're yeah, like a yeah. franchise. 
and I, I have a timer set or a calendar reminder every year to check and see if in case they didn't renew their GoDaddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so one of these days I'll get Firestorm.com, but uh, you know they and they, so the close. thing that they they filed like like two months before I did. That's and hilarious. Bought, I'm like, oh, he's so close. <laughs> anyway, it's yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody can find you if they want to. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, get it. Um, well, thanks. It's been a fun conversation. We're we're only like a forty minute Zoom call acquainted before this, but it's funny how many uh, relevancies we ran across yeah. in a similar journey. So this was great. Thanks for having me. Thanks, on. Phil. Thanks for being here. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Loco Experience Podcast, produced and sponsored by Loco Think Tank. This is your producer, Alma Ariano. Check out our website at thelocoexperience.com to find all of our episodes, nominate future guests, or leave us a message. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at The Loco Experience. To support the show, please subscribe and share it with your favorite people. Until next time, stay loco.